Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So this one's going to be an update for my Vampire Crab Paludarium. So the big one I built a while back. I'll leave a link in the description if you haven't seen that video yet. But we're just going to go over some of the uh, good things and some of the bad things. So uh, we'll start with the plants first because this is something I've been asked about the most. Starting down here in the bottom left hand corner. So originally down in this corner here, I had some baby tears, I believe, off the top of my head. I'll leave the name of the plant in the description. And the crabs essentially ate that one entirely. So they started with the roots, they burrowed in under, ate the roots, then the top was next. So that plant got demolished. Uh, it happened to the other three that I had in the tank as well. So I've replaced it with this red spot plant. I'll leave a name for that on the screen as well because I'm not sure of it off the top of my head. So apart from that, that's going well. The asparagus fern in the back is sort of hit and miss, but I think that's because the heat pad is right next to that uh, part of the tank. And uh, when I first started using it in the middle of winter, it was quite warm and I think that affected the asparagus plant a little bit. It's throwing up some new shoots now, so it's going normally. Just a slow start on that one. So next up at the back here, you'll see this big patch of moss. Uh, that's actually Java moss from my aquarium. I just put that in there. It's got a bit of a hollow in the middle. So the crabs sort of burrow up and dig inside there. So there's, I think there's quite a few living in there at the moment. So yeah, that's slowly adjusted over to the immersed state from being underwater entirely. So it does look a little bit rough, but it's settling in fine. Next up, these plants in the front here. So I'm not sure the names again. I'll leave them on the screen as usual. They're spreading really well. I've been trimming those quite a lot. So this tank would be overgrown if it wasn't for that. They're going well. There's some white Fetonia there. Again, where this red spot plant is, there used to be a fern there, you might remember. So one on the left and one on the right. So that's the bigger one there on the right and the small fig tree I've put in. So with the ferns, the crabs ate the first one on the left here where the red spot plant is, but the second one's growing quite well. Got some trimmings here as well. So the main red spot plant there I have in the middle, I've trimmed quite a few times as well. It grows to the top really quick, but now I think this is the third trimming. So I'm trying to get it to get a little less uh, tall and stringy and a little bit more bushy. So next up, we have some more red spot plants in the back there. I originally had some ferns in there, but they melted back. The crabs ate them, so we've changed that out. It's still surviving, but uh, there's another red spot plant in there. This green one here in the front, I'm not 100% sure what it is. I picked that up from the forest, but it's starting to creep across really nice. Someone might be able to tell me exactly what it is in the description. But for now, it's quite a nice plant. It spreads pretty quick, and it's nice to have a creeping plant in the tank. It grows from trimmings really well too, so I'm going to spread that one around as time goes by. As you can see, the water section here, the salvinia is going really well. I like to keep that pretty much across the entire thing because the crabs eat it and it's good for the water quality. Okay, so moving on to the moss on the log that I originally got. This stuff here, you can see it sort of looks a little bit dry and it's primarily because of the light. Uh, it's not that far away and it's on for quite a long time. Even with misting, it sort of dries it out a little bit, but uh, depending on what section, it is coming back quite strong. So. I think it's going to grow in fine in some more time. I've made some adjustments with the light, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yeah, as you can see here, it's sort of a little bit patchy and stringy and dried out in some sections, but I have been trimming it quite a lot as well, so that's one of the other reasons it looks so uh, trimmed back, and this isn't that far after a trimming. So in the bottom section here, you can see the moss sort of dried back a little bit as well. I believe it got a little bit too waterlogged. Uh, but it's starting to come back again. Uh, there's some fern moss popping up in there as well, which is nice. It's quite a nice looking moss. Here we have some hydrocotyl Japan. Uh, I couldn't get this to grow in my aquarium, so I took the last little remaining bits out and it seems to be doing quite well in here. Hopefully that takes over. At the top here, I have some pennywort. Uh, this started with a tiny amount and it's going crazy, so I'm just leaving that grow. I'm tempted to leave it overgrow all of this moss section here, but we will see. It might help with some of the issues with the light being a little bit strong, but we'll see how it goes. It's actually hard to keep up with. It's growing so fast. Okay, so over on this side of the tank, I added another fern in the back corner here and a couple of uh, bigger rocks. So this was just to give the crabs a little bit more of a place to hide. So you'll see under here, uh, there's a lot of caves and crevices they've dug out. So that was definitely an addition. There is a lot of crabs in here, so that made a big difference. Another important change here, and one that I should have added when I first built the tank, is a little drainage uh, tube. So 
as you can see here this one goes into the back of the water section so this tank has two separated sections so a water section at the front and a dry section at the back with clay balls in the bottom so i've added this little airline tubing it's just a little siphon hose and probably about once a week i just drain it out and that just keeps the back section from filling up from condensation dripping down the glass so you could probably do it every two weeks but for now i'm just doing it once a week and draining a little bit of water out so basically i just unclip it lower it down and then just let it siphon out it's gravity fed so it works really well i just use a little syringe to start the suction and it drains out pretty quickly so outside of that probably the biggest problem with this tank was the lighting so i have a 70 centimeter light on this tank and as you can see here on the left and you'll see on the right as well it doesn't quite cover the full length of the tank so the plant growth on the far left in the back corner and the far right in the back corner is a little bit slower and some of the moss didn't go as well because it was a little bit dark i've had some trouble trying to find a decent light for this a one meter long light that isn't a million dollars so i want to try and keep it nice and cheap so i might end up switching from 70 centimeter to a 70 centimeter and a 30 centimeter maybe a 40 centimeter we will see uh, exactly what the sizing is uh, without the braces on there so that's my next upgrade for this and i think it's going to make the biggest difference just to get a bit more light consistency at the moment every second day i will just slide the current light across to either the far left or the far right to give the plants some proper lighting just like that so that would be the biggest issue i've had um, i thought the 70 centimeter light would have been enough but it wasn't so you'll see the two edges of the tank don't have as much growth as the middle so it's definitely something to be aware of make sure your lighting is uh, nice and even across your tank so as for the water section i mentioned earlier i like to keep salvinia across the surface for all of it uh, this is good for the water quality crabs eat it springtails seem to sit on it which is quite interesting you can zoom in you'll see some springtails creeping around here and basically walk on water and they'll go everywhere and the crabs eat them as well so this quite handy little live food source and they multiply so fast you don't really have to worry about them getting wiped out as for the water section um i've got ramsolin snails and malaysian trumpet snails i wouldn't add the malaysian trumpet snails again in the future they're a bit of a pest i started with two and there's probably about 200 in here now while the crabs eat the snails they seem to focus on the ramsolin snails the most so the malaysian trumpet snails don't really have a predator and they're kind of getting out of control so i might have to do something about that in the future i don't know if they're going to self-regulate but we will see as you can see here there is a crab malt and the snails are starting to process it down it usually takes about a week and i just leave them in the tank uh, the crabs eat them as well it's good for their calcium build up here is a little bit more of a process down one so there's just bits of crab uh, so some legs and some shell so apart from that the tank is doing really well so if I was to change anything in this build i would make sure i got the one meter length light from the start just to get the plant growth evenly across the tank i would have added the little drainage tube at the back here on the side to drain the water out of the back section uh, you can add it later it was easy enough for me so just something i would add in the first build it makes life easier and then obviously the plant selection so i'll leave in the description the original plant list and the ones that i would avoid because the crabs ate them so it's kind of pointless mine got eaten so fast they didn't even get a chance to take hold so i would avoid those entirely and i'll swap in the ones that actually worked so the red spot plant definitely a good addition to add it grows fast it looks pretty good and the crabs like climbing on the leaves so yeah i think that wraps up this little update video if you have any questions uh, don't forget to ask in the comments and as always don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in another video thanks everyone see you next time mm -hmm.